Hi, Chris here with ISK Pro Audio. Have you ever heard of a guy named Lee DeForest? He lived from 1873 to 1961, and he invented one of the most important inventions of the technology revolution, the triode vacuum tube. Now, you might be thinking, well, why is the triode vacuum tube one of the most important inventions ever? And let me explain. See, Mr. DeForest, he was an audio enthusiast. Matter of fact, I think he was one of the very first audio enthusiasts. He was trying to find a way to amplify electronic sound to use for broadcast. Now, the idea of a vacuum tube already existed. It had two elements, an anode and a cathode, and electricity would flow between those two elements. But that wasn't very useful. Now, what Mr. Lee DeForest discovered is that he could add a third element in between them called a grid, and that would control the flow of electricity between them. The problem with Mr. DeForest's design was he was convinced there had to be some kind of substance in this tube to help the electricity flow more efficiently. So despite his best efforts to find something, he, the one thing that he didn't try was a complete vacuum. So he patented his design and he gave up on it because he just couldn't quite get it to work. And then many years later, some guys at Bell Laboratories bought his patent for dirt cheap. And they discovered that if you didn't put anything inside the tube, matter of fact, literally took everything out, sucked all the air, all the oxygen, everything, and just created a vacuum inside of it, the electricity would flow really well. As a matter of fact, it would flow really, really well. And you could use the grid to control the flow of electricity between the anode and the cathode with great fidelity. And it worked so good they could amplify audio, they used it for broadcast and even radar installations. And this was the beginning of the triode vacuum tube being implemented in multiple electronic applications. But haphazardly, the vacuum tube actually had another function. You see, it would only allow positive electricity to flow through it. Whenever there was a negative current, it would simply shut off and not allow any electricity to pass. Now, this was useful because it could produce two values, an on or an off. Or we could call those two values a yes or a no. Or just to make it simple, we could call them a a zero and a one. And they realized that you could combine a whole bunch of vacuum tubes together to perform some simple calculations. And the more vacuum tubes you added, the more complex the calculations could get. In 1946, the University of Pennsylvania put together 18,000 vacuum tubes to create the world's first computer. It weighed 50 tons, and it was used by the U.S. Army to calculate artillery trajectories. What would take a team of mathematicians all day, this computer could do it in only half an hour. And in theory, these vacuum tube computers had limitless power because you could always add more and more vacuum tubes to get more and more complex calculations. The problem is, vacuum tubes are expensive, and when you have thousands and thousands of them, they're pretty bulky, and they suck up a lot of electricity. Throughout the 1940s, scientists were developing a new technology to try and replace the vacuum tube. Instead of passing the electricity through a vacuum, they were trying to find a suitable material that the electricity could pass through and perform the same function, but with a material that's solid in its state. It took them a long time to find a material that even worked, and then even longer to find a material that was economical. But what they discovered was silica. And using silica instead of a vacuum, they could make a device that works on the same principles as a vacuum tube, but instead of calling it an anode, a cathode, and a grid, they called it an emitter, a collector, and a base. And the advantage of this material was it was easier to manufacture and smaller. These new inventions were called transistors. And in 1958, IBM built a computer using 52,000 transistors, and it only weighed 10 tons. IBM sold these computers for $813,000 each. Now, in 1958, there was a major breakthrough in transistor technology. A couple of really smart fellows named Jack Kilby and Robert Noyce discovered that you could sandwich a whole bunch of these transistors together as one single unit and manufacture it that way. They were going to call it a chip, but they wanted a name that sounded fancier, so they called it the microchip. Robert Noyce went on to be the founder of a little outfit called Intel Corp, and in 1971, they released their first microprocessor. It was a single microchip that contained 2,250 transistors, as well as some memory and input and output controls. And ever since then, they've been making them smaller and smaller with more and more transistors. Today's microprocessors have as many as 6 million little transistors all squeezed together on one little chip. And these microprocessors are the key component in almost every piece of electronic technology that we have. So that's why I think the triode vacuum tube is one of the most important inventions in our era of technology. It served as a model for the invention of the transistor, and then the transistor grew into the invention of the microprocessor. Thanks for listening, and check out our other videos to learn about audio recording, mixing, and mastering.